Hi, I'm Mathieu Lapointe and I'm joined by my colleagues Catherine Richard and Jan Fraser. We are Chartered Business Valuators and work in the valuations and forensics practice at PwC. This video is part of a series focused on litigation support. Our subject today is the involvement of CBVs in matrimonial proceedings. So let's start with you, Catherine. Can you explain why this type of family law matters often requires parties and their counsel to consult with CBVs? In matrimonial proceedings, the financial situation of a spouse will often be questioned by the other party. The assets owned may be hard to value, or their existence might not even be known because they were hidden during the course of the marriage. So I would say that the three main areas CBVs are involved in these types of proceedings include the net worth of each spouse, meaning taking a picture of the financial situation at the beginning of the marriage and at the end, this includes the valuations of investments in private entities and trusts. The second one will be the calculation of notional or guideline income. And lastly, we are often asked to do some level of investigation to make sure that all of the assets included in net worth and that all of the revenue sources that must be included in the guideline income have been identified. Jan, before we jump into the detail of each area that Catherine just mentioned, can you explain how the CBV's involvement complements the work of the lawyers in the context of matrimonial proceedings? CBVs can help counsel interpret disclosure and to identify key financial, key financial issues early on in the proceedings. CBVs can assist with the preparation of information request lists to ensure the appropriate documents are provided as disclosure and in a format that is most efficient to work with. Involving a CBV early on and remaining in close contact throughout the process can help to ensure that the complex financial matters are navigated in a more timely manner and that the client's financial resources are used as efficiently as possible. Moving on to the three areas that you mentioned earlier, Catherine, with respect to the calculation of net worth, when is it helpful to call a CBV and how do we bring value beyond the compilation of account balances? We are typically involved when individuals have a significant portion of their net worth tied to investments in private entities. As opposed to shares of publicly traded companies, there isn't a statement available to disclose the value of the shares of a private company. And this leads us to perform a business valuation. Yes, in many instances, expert reports prepared in the context of matrimonial proceedings for the calculation of net worth will include a business valuation exercise as defined in the CBV practice standards. The business valuation may form part of the expert report itself or be presented as a standalone report to which the calculation of net worth refers. The business valuation will present the outlook value of the shares of the company. Sometimes the ownership of a private company will be shared between more than one shareholder and there might also be family trust in the corporate structure. It can often look very complicated. We are also there to help understand how the value arising from private companies is split between the different classes of shares, as well as the different shareholders or trust beneficiaries. So in the valuation report, we can go a step further to establish the value of the shares held by a spouse specifically, based on the characteristics of each class of shares. What additional insight can CBVs bring on other assets? For assets other than shares in private companies, we analyze the financial documentation available in order to list them in the net worth statements at their estimated market values. The valuation of certain types of assets, for example, real estate assets, may fall outside of the scope of expertise of CBVs. How are those elements incorporated in the calculation of net worth? In some instances, we collaborate with other experts retained by the parties. For example, the parties may retain the services of a real estate appraiser to value real estate assets. We may also need to rely on the work of actuaries for the value of pension plans. The value of an asset may be estimated based on other available information, such as historical costs, municipal assessments, or other information from publicly available sources. Another common area for the CBVs to be involved in matrimonial proceedings relates to quantifying notional or guideline income. Jan, can you explain the CBV's role in this context? For the purposes of establishing a level of support, income is generally quantified in accordance with the Federal Child Support Guidelines, or in Quebec, the Quebec Regulations. On the other hand, the Spousal Support Advisory Guidelines give guidance for income calculations for spousal support. 
CBVs can bring a financial lens to income quantification under the guidelines and can be integral in assisting the court in understanding a spouse's income that might be available for the purposes of paying support. Essentially, the objective is to level the playing field to determine income of a self-employed or business owning spouse as compared to a spouse that is employed in an arm's length position. Thanks, Jan. How can a CBV contribute to identifying assets? CBVs can assist with measuring the value of assets and liabilities and ensuring that all assets and sources of income are included on the relevant statement of income or statement of property. Sometimes it involves a deeper dive to understand sources and uses of cash, which gives us some understanding of the income and assets available to the spouses. And this resembles forensic accounting. Yes, it does. CBVs involved in family law matters often utilize their training and experience with forensic and investigative accounting procedures to assist in the identification of additional assets or sources of income. CBVs can leverage their expertise and experience to work with the spouse and their counsel to ensure that the scope of work makes sense for the specific matter. The identification of assets remains heavily dependent on the analysis of the documents provided or voluntary disclosure by the parties. What corroboration approaches can be used to validate the completeness of the information received? A common situation where such an analysis may be applicable is when a spouse's lifestyle and the income they report are not consistent. A CBV can help peel back the layers to understand uh, the underlying differences between lifestyle and income. This completes our quick overview of the CBV's involvement in matrimonial proceedings. Thank you, Catherine and Jan, for taking the time to share your experience with us.